Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Mike here and I thought I would take this video outside because it's a real mess right now and this relates well to uh, PowerPoint design and how it can be a little bit messy. So I'm going to show you how to use Slide Master in PowerPoint to clean up uh, the design of your presentation. So that's coming up in this video. All right, so our first activity will download the volunteers PowerPoint file. So that's going to look like this once we open this up. And just in case you ever run into this, um, remember that when you download, a lot of the time you have to say enable editing because it'll be in protected view. So you can just press the enable editing button. And if you're not sure how to do that, there's another way to do that. You can go to the file tab and then right there, it'll just ask you to enable editing. And now we can make changes in this document. So in this activity, we're going to explore the design tab. And I also made an intentional mistake that will I'll show you guys how to fix. But first, we're going to change the layout of our first slide from title slide to title and content. So I just did that. That might have been a little quick. But this should be review if you saw my last video. And it says in step two, type Mount Sinai in the title box. And we're going to type volunteers into the text box placeholder. OK, so we turn, change our title slide into a title and content slide by going to the layout drop arrow and choosing uh, a different layout. So now we're going to go to the design tab. And in here, you have a lot of theme, um, sort of like the templates that you're presented with whenever you start a new uh, PowerPoint. So we're going to click the drop arrow. And then we're going to search for the WISP theme. So in real time, this actually took me a long time to find the WISP uh, design. I sort of had to go through all of the theme types so that might be something that you want to explore just you know hover your mouse over the names of all the different theme types but i eventually found it and it's right here so this is my intentional mistake look what happened when we changed the design um, some of the text boxes especially with the title and content layout are sort of merged over top of the content points and just because we changed the design so it kind of forced the um, title and content to uh, overlap. So a way to fix that would be to fix that within, instead of going to each individual slide, you can change that in the slide master view. So this is a great opportunity to explore the slide master view in case something like this happens to you. So to get to the slide master view, we click on the view tab, click slide master. And what this does is it creates sort of like um, takes us to an area that controls different layouts. So the top one controls all of the layouts. The one at the bottom controls the, um, when we put our mouse over top of it, it controls the title and content layout used by slides one to six. So those are all our slides. We only have six slides in this presentation. So that controls all of that title and content uh, layout. And I'm just fixing it from here. So I'm just moving the boxes so they don't overlap in this slide master view. And I only have to do that once. So and it affects the layouts of slides one to six instead of doing that in the normal view six times. So you can see how the slide master view uh, can really save you some time. And just don't forget to exit out of slide master view and go into normal view uh, when you're doing this. So I'll show you how to get into the slide master view again. So view tab slide master and then how to get out of it too so that's a tricky part because sometimes your microsoft exam will have you change something in the slide master and then it looks like the normal view so you start making all these changes and it really messes up so remember to say close master view you'll know you're in slide master because it'll be slide master tab beside the home tab once you close it that should disappear so that wasn't an official step in our activity, but I just thought I'd show that bit to show you why um, Slide Master is important. But we'll move on to step five. Click the drop arrow button in the theme variance group. And now we can choose colors and fonts from here. So you can choose the variants um, that are offered. And here's some font options. And again, this is one of those ones that took me a long time to find the Arial at Times New Roman, but it is right here. And now for now for our last step, we're going to uh, also choose colors from that variance uh, gallery. So if you're asked to change the theme color, it's not just some random color. Theme colors are in the variance um, gallery under when you click the more the drop arrow and we pick colors 
and then we're going to choose the blue green option so blue green is about middle way through some of those color options so colors and then choose blue green and that's it for activity one so in this activity we're going to create a jeopardy board using hyperlinks in powerpoint and if that sounds confusing it probably is but i'm going to walk you through it um, so the way Jeopardy works is you have the scoreboard, so we're only going to do one column. Um, and what happens is uh, they'll have categories along the columns, like study of ethics, for example. And then the 10-point question is uh, fairly easy. And if you want to wager 50 points, that's a little bit more challenging question. So um, we want to link the 10 points to the third slide. And Jeopardy is also weird because they give you the so they'll give you the answer, but you have to formulate the question that best fits, fits with that answer. So we want our board. So for this first one, this is the easy one, um, Ethos, which is um, if you're doing an F, uh, course on ethics, that would be like repeat every class. That is the uh, what is Greek for character. So that's the question that you have to formulate. So what we want to do is create a hyperlink from that 10 points one to this etho slide on the third uh, slide here and then we're not going to create a hyperlink to the next slide because what we want to do in our presentation is make sure um, we click on this slide and it'll go to the answer so it'll re reveal the answer the answer is really the question what is greek for character and then we want to create a hyperlink that'll take us back when we click on this slide that'll go back to the scoreboard so this activity is going to Really make sure you know how to use hyperlinks within a presentation. Okay, so let's get started. So we'll download this Jeopardy Ethics PowerPoint file, and then we'll go to slide two and make the following hyperlinks to other slides in this presentation. So pretty much for every other slide, like uh, for anything past the number one, for odd number slides, we're going to make sure that the 10 points have a link to slide three, the 20 points links to slide 5 and so on. So I'm going to show you how to use um, hyperlinks in a presentation. So we're going to click on this shape. Uh, there's a few ways you can insert a hyperlink. I'm going to show you uh, as many as I can. So click on that shape. You can go to insert. And this is the longer way. There's a shorter way to do this and I'll show you. Um, and then go to the link button. Okay, so we'll click on the link uh, icon. That'll bring up this little um, dialog box here and we want to hyperlink to uh, this isn't helping because <laughs> um, these are all our options we do want to go to the next slide but I want to put in like slide so I'll put in slide and then we want to choose slide 3 okay so choose slide hyperlink to slide 3 and that'll take us to this ethos one okay so the 10 point square will jump to slide 3 now and now we're going to do the same thing for 20 points and make sure it links to slide 5. So another way you can do this is click on the shape, right click, and then choose the same thing, the link icon, and do the exact same thing. So we're going to choose slide again, and then slide 5, press OK, OK, and do that. So as you go down, it skips two slides. So now we're on to slide 7. So I'm going to just do the quick right click, link. It's too bad PowerPoint isn't like Excel where it sees you doing something in a pattern and then helps you find that pattern a little bit quicker, but PowerPoint doesn't do that. So slide, this goes to slide seven. Forty points will go to slide nine. So again, when you're doing this, it's just good practice to uh, how to hyperlink into a different part of your presentation. It might save you some time if you have like key information and you're running out of time. Uh, you can just click on maybe uh, a word or a text box and that'll take you to that important information. So make sure you don't highlight, make sure you highlight the shape, not the individual, because some people um, some of my students from last semester, they were highlighting like one letter. So when they clicked on the shape, um, it didn't work in their presentation until they clicked on that letter. So make sure you highlight the shape. I almost just did that mistake right now and just clicked on one letter. 
um, which means you have to click on the eye and that's confusing. So just click on the shape. It's a little easier to use if you're setting this up. So this last one goes to slide 11. And you can see there's 12 slides in there. So we really don't have to put a slide to the one below it. The way presentations work or PowerPoint works is that if it takes you to this slide and you click any button or click on the slide, it'll go to the next one. But now we have to, the third step is highlight the following slides one by one and make each one jump back to slide uh, two. So highlight the following slides one by one and each one jump back to slide two. So this, make sure it goes back to this uh, scoreboard. So the the ones with the answers on them, we want to make sure that uh, we have a way to get back. So the way that works, someone clicks on 10 points, they come here, and they have to come up with a question, and then you reveal if they got it right. And then once you reveal if they got it right or wrong, you have to go back to the scoreboard. So see how that loop kind of works a little bit? Um, I'll show you what it looks like in Slideshow after. So for all these odd, uh, sort of for all these even number pages that start at slide 4, make sure they go back to slide two. So we're going to pick the whole slide so we can click anywhere on it. And then same thing, link it back to slide uh, two. Okay, so we're going to make sure this goes right back to slide two. This one as well, make sure you click on the whole slide first. Link, hyperlink to Slide two. I know this is a little bit repetitive, but it's not a bad idea to practice this. So, okay, so these are really, and make sure you don't click on the text box, you click on the whole slide so the presenter could click anywhere on the slide. Hyperlink to slide two. Yeah, they already, okay, so they picked up the pattern that I'm going to slide two. So PowerPoint can pick up on patterns, look at that. Um, and then, no, it didn't get it that time. Go back to slide two. And then last one. We click on link. Back to slide two. And now we have a Jeopardy board. Well, at least have like a fifth of one. I'm not sure how many columns there actually are in a Jeopardy board. But that would be a lot of work. So. <clears throat> okay, so that's it for test to see if your hyperlinks worked. Okay, so the way you do that is I'm going to quickly press F5 and then start my presentation. Then we're going to click, so I click F5. So yeah, we want the Jeopardy title. And then we'll quick click on that 10 points, see if it comes to the Etho slide. It does. And then we'll press the next button or like the space bar. Okay. And then it says, reveals the question that the participant should, should have uh, gathered. And then when we click on this, it goes back to the scoreboard. So now I'm just going to press the escape button. And we've got a few other things to do. Add the following section. So now we're going to learn how to put sections in our presentation. So a lot of people use this like um, if you had a two to three slide introduction or you had an activity associated with certain slides, you might want to let yourself know um, that you're coming up on that section. So in between slides two and three, Oh, we're going to, okay, I see, okay, so, oh, look, we already got 10 points here. All right, and if you, so that's an example, the 10 points one, uh, right there. So we know that 10 points starts there. We also have to do, so this is where the 20 points would start, and this is how you put a section. So right-click, make sure you, so make sure you've got a horizontal red line in between um, slides four and five, and then we're going to right-click, and then add section. Okay, we're going to name this one 20 points. Okay, so that's how you create a section in PowerPoint. If you missed that, I'm going to do it again a few more times. So uh, in between, now I'm in between slides 6 and 7. I'm going to right-click, new, not new slide. That was an error. Undo that. Right-click, add section. And now this is the 30-point section. All right, so I can just double check 20 points, 30 points. And then I want to go in between slides 8 and 9. Add section, 40 points. Anyway, so I know this is a little bit repetitive, but if you were completing this activity, 
Um, this would be good practice. And this is a new slide again. Oops, I went a little fast. Okay, so for this last one, for these last two, add a section, and this is the 50 point section. 50 points, rename it, and that is it for step five. So that is it for our second activity. So for this last activity, we'll just do something quick with the um, master slides again. So to get to our master slides, we'll go to, and before we go there, just notice the bullet points on in between slides three and five. Um, they're sort of the default circular bullet points. And instead of trying to change them um, in different steps and taking a lot of time um, to do each slide, a really quick way to um, change this the the design of those slides really click quick is to go use the slide master view so under the view tab we'll click on slide master and then make sure um, the first slide it takes you doesn't actually control all of the slides this is actually the title and content layout which is used by a lot of slides uh, it is used uh, for slides three and five but if you want to go to the real slide master the slide master is at the top, so you have to scroll up to the top and then go to um, the actual name is circuit slide master. So the theme is circuit and then it's the slide master at the top. And I'm only telling you this because if you were given this on your exam saying the circuit slide master, some people might assume that it's the first one um, that it takes you to, but it's not. So you have to scroll up and there's one at the very, very top. You can see these little lines that connect to all the slide layout types. Um, and they all connect to this, this overall grand uh, slide master, the master of all the slide layout types. Um, so we're gonna click that one. Okay, and then, ch although, yeah. So, yeah, that's how we, that is the slide master. And we're going to click on the, the content box and change the bullet points. So we're still in the, the slide master view, but we can use the home tab functions and we're gonna change the bullet points just like we would in a normal view to hollow square so i believe that's this one hollow square bullets okay and then click outside and now when we so we have to exit slide master so that's an important step too is learning how to exit the slide master and not assuming that we're normal view okay you can kind of tell we're in normal view now because beside the home tab you don't see slide master so we're in the normal view and now we've changed the bullets in one step on slides three to five and any other slides that come after them because we changed the um, the bullet points in our slide master. So that's it for activity three. Thank you so much for watching and if you made it through this video I've got uh, more videos on slide master. You can watch the one at the top uh, which will cover more about slide master and the one at the bottom is a PowerPoint exam and the first few steps um, are all about slide master and how to use placeholders using the slide master view. Thanks again. We'll see you next time